Well, how's it going? I heard you say, so how is it going? It's going great. You know? we, uh, uh, we're having a great week so far. It's a great week of preparation, and uh, everyone's really locked in and focused on what we need to do and in order to finish out the season strong. So no complaints from me. Do you watch things like the college football playoff selection show last night? Yes, I, I saw it last night. And, of course, like sometimes you don't even have to watch it. You can just get on Twitter or Instagram or anything like that, and you can see the reactions of people, the, the results, the outcome. So I... You know, I, I just get it from, from Twitter and other things like that. You surprised you're number one? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, we're lucky enough to uh, have stayed that same spot all year, and, you know, we just got to keep playing like we have been, and we'll be, you know, hopefully we stay there. Do you, as a player, how important is it to be able to control your own fate, your own, you know, your own road ahead? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, just you don't want to put your own fate into the hands of, you know, a committee. Like, if you can stay undefeated, Obviously, that's what you want to do because if you're ten and zero and you win the SEC and you and you, you win all of your games, then no one can deny you that number one spot, and that's a great feeling just to know you're in your own driver's seat and you don't have to leave it up to you know some people on a committee. Um, so obviously, you want to you know control your own destiny in college football. Did uh, Nick? Or, sorry, did Nick and the coaching staff address the rankings at all with you guys? No, um, I mean no one really talks about it here. I mean we all know we're number one right now. Um, but we just put our nose to the grindstone. We work hard every day. We're just trying to not slip up um, and really just do what we can do to get back to that same spot we were last year. What do you think this, I mean, you guys getting in the red zone, sometimes getting the touchdowns of an issue. Is there an issue there? What happens, do you think, when you get to the 20-yard line? Um, I don't think it's, it's um, so much of a, of a certain issue. I think it's just simply just not – Executing. I mean, we know what we have to do. We work on it all the time in practice. It's just sometimes things just don't go your own way in the red zone, and defense gets tighter. You have less room to work. Um, it's just the red zone's a hard place to score. I mean, as you all know, and uh, we just got to keep working and get better at it, and uh, you know we'll get it fixed. It was pretty obvious the offense, or uh, you know, Lane was trying to kind of open up the passing game this last game. Uh, how do you feel that, that that did? It seemed like there were quite a few. Uh, passes around the line of scrimmage and not so many maybe downfield? Um, you know, we have such a such a wide array of different passes and, and plays that we can pick from. You know, it's really hard to to just kind of focus on one thing, like you said, passing downfield. Um, Jalen's such a good quarterback that we can do, you know, a lot of different things, whether it be, you know, running screens or throwing the short passes on the uh, on the line of scrimmage to, to airing it out. So we're really just trying to make it more comfortable for him and really, you know, just kind of instill his confidence more and more and just really just, you know, broadening his horizon so we can just become a more complete team and a more complete offense. Tell me your thoughts on Deron Payne on defense. What uh, what makes him such a special player? Oh, my gosh. he's He is an athletic specimen. I mean, as you guys have seen, he is probably the strongest dude on our team, if not one of the strongest. Um, I mean, he's just – his quick twitch, his explosion, his power is – something that I've never seen, you know, out of a D lineman, especially for being how young he is. Like, I think he's younger than me. And that's just, for him to be that strong and that fast and that just a complete player at, you know, just being a sophomore is, is incredible. So, um, obviously, and he's a great leader on our defense, too, which is something that people don't talk about a whole lot. But he's a, a great leader. I know you probably don't go up, you know, one-on-one -on -one with him or something like that. But Anthony Everett, what have you, have you seen him kind of evolve this season? first year starting. I'm glad I don't have to go against him, but uh, um, just everything, he's kind of taken his game to a new level since last year. You know, he played quite a bit last year um, as a freshman, and just what he's done um, from a knowledge aspect to making plays to being a formidable run stopper in the middle um, has really, you know, helped our defense strive and was one of the reasons why our defense is playing so great right now, just his presence in the middle, and I think, you know, we would we would greatly miss him if he wasn't there. How much confidence does having a running back like Josh Jacobs that can kind of make people miss or break tackles? How much does that give you? You know, if you miss a block, he's he's, yeah. he's going to beat the guy anyways. Uh, it, it's it gives you great confidence. You know, just to see that. I, it's not so much that I have to you know pancake a guy. I just have to get in the way, just so he can can make a cut or he can you know run past the guy because he's such an elusive, shifty back that and, and they all are. But you know, as you saw with Josh's run where he like cut twice and made two guys miss like when he went down to the five that just really highlighted 
how explosive and how quick he really is and how he's just scratching the surface of what, you know, how great of a player he's going to be if he keeps developing. Is that vision weird to see from a freshman? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, that vision is weird to see from anybody, I think, especially from a freshman. Um, just, you know, how, how well he gets it already. and He's so young. And, you know, our offense isn't simple by any means. It's very complicated. So for him to be able to make those plays and have that kind of vision is something that, you know, gives us a lot of hope and is one of the reasons why we have so much confidence in him. I wanted to ask you, what, what do you feel, obviously on the depth chart, you have the two tight end spots, but you know, what do you feel is unique about the tight end position here at Alabama and kind of how they utilize that? Well, um, I would say tight end in general and especially here is such a unique position because of everything you're asked to do. Especially here, you know, we're doing everything from pass blocking to run blocking to blocking in space, blocking on the edge to running deep routes, running short routes, uh, being asked to play on the goal line. I say, and then another thing is just having a, a, an overall knowledge of the playbook. Because not only do we have to know all the receiving routes, we have to know the line calls, we have to know like where exactly the run's going to go. Because it's it's a very technical position, and not only do you have to be a tackle, but you also have to be a wide receiver. So I would say just a combination of, of those two skills makes it really unique. A couple more. You guys don't really pay attention to awards, but uh, J.K. Scott kind of got left off of the Ray, uh, the Ray Guy Award. Did you guys talk to him about that, or is there a little bit of fuss and locker about that? Um, I, I saw some stuff over Twitter and things like that, but I mean, obviously he's a very deserving punter. I mean, I think he's the best punter in the country. Um, he's my punter, of course, but what JK has done for our team is is, is something that can't be measured in awards. It's, it's being a great leader, um, he's a great man, um, and he just kickstarts our special teams that you guys have seen. He launches the ball, and that, you know, is. Even though, even if he might not get an award, what he means to our team is is you can't put a price on it. You talk about the tight end position. What has uh, Coach Cristobal brought to that? You know, helping y'all individually. Uh, you know, after dealing with the offensive line for so many years. Uh, just overall, a better understanding of how to block. Because I mean, in high school, I I played in a spread offense, so I mean, I knew how to block, but just the. the all the techniques, you know, where to put your hat, your feet, your hands. That's something that I didn't really know too well until I got here and he really started teaching us. So just kind of teaching us more, you know, of an offensive lineman mentality in all of our blocks. And I think that's really helped us become a better blocking unit. And he knows quite a bit in the passing game too. And uh, just all the things that he's taught us has really helped us evolve as a unit. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Thanks, Joe.